Chapter 4. Bulgaria 1490. Beautiful human Katerina Petrova lay on her bed wailing in pain as she gave birth, whilst her younger sister and mother coached her through it. A little more dearest, a little more. Her mother cooed in their native language of Bulgarian, push. A little more. You can do it, dear sister. Katerina's little sister encouraged. A little more, a little more. Her mother chanted. Katerina let out a loud, pain-filled scream as the baby was finally out of her in her mother's arms. It's a girl, Katerina mom said. A girl, Katerina repeated in joy as she panted as she saw the baby begin to cry and squirm in the older woman's arms, please mother, let me see her. Her mother was about to pass the baby girl over to her new mother. Woman, don't. Katerina's father shouted with a glare as he stepped forward into the picture a angry look plastered on his face, what are you doing? He scolded. As her mother submissively refused to let Katerina see her newborn baby girl, Katerina watched in shock while her mother passed the baby over to her husband with a mournful and regretful look on her face. Let me at least hold her once, just once. Katerina begged. Forget it. He growled, you have disgraced this family, laying with that beast. He spat as he left the room with her baby in his arms. Father, please, no, father, no. Katerina called hearing her baby's cries become more faint as he left the room, attempting to get up crying, only for her mother to hold her down. No Katerina, it's better for her. It's better for her. Her mom yelled embracing her, while she cried. No mother, please. Katerina cried, let her go, dot let her go Katerina, please, mama, Katerina pleaded still sobbing, two years later, England, inside a mansion, there is a party is underway, the room is filled with guests talking to each other, Trevor is speaking with a woman, he leaves her for a moment and walks over to Elijah, ah, good evening, Trevor, I am pleased you could join us, Elijah greets him, I could not miss the birthday celebration. Trevor remarks. No, considering the gift you claim to bear. Where is this mystery girl of which you speak? Elijah asks. Right this way. Trevor motions for him to follow. Elijah follows him. They join come up behind Katerina, who is speaking another guest. My dear. Trevor mentions as he taps her lightly on the arm and she turns around and greets Elijah. Hello. She greets him. Elijah is dumbfounded at how she can look exactly like Tatia, before he realized he was making a fool of himself and apologized, forgive me. You remind me of someone. Katerina, may I introduce the Lord Elijah? Trevor introduced. Elijah holds out his hand. She takes it and curtsies. Pleasure, my lord, she says. The pleasure's mine, Katerina, Elijah says as he kisses her hand. Later. Elijah is with Katerina as they walked around, talking to the guests. So where is this mysterious host I've heard so much about? Katerina acts. Fashionably late. He likes to make an entrance, my brother. Elijah said as he noted someone coming down the stairs. A.H. Here he is. Elijah showed. Naruto is hidden by the crowd as he walks closer to them while Katerina looks for him. When she sees him, she is immediately taken in by his amazing looks. Katerina, may I introduce to you the Lord Niklas? Elijah introduces. She curtsies to Naruto and Naruto kisses her hand. Niklas is the name my stepfather gave me and one I've tossed aside. Please, I prefer the name I chose for myself. Naruto, he says as he smiles at her. So, from where have you come, Katerina? Naruto acts. I'm new to town, my lord. Katerina struggled a little to say, as the banishment from her home was a touchy subject. Elijah looks at Naruto with a smile. Katerina is from Bulgaria. Elijah informs him and Naruto smiles. Zadreve, Katerina, Kakvi Tredira Anglia, Naruto asks as he slips into perfect Bulgarian, which was pleasant surprise for Katerina, as laughs in delight at the unexpected use of her mother tongue. Manogo Dobre, Naruto, Tezi Angliski Vyaka Manogo Privatlivi. Katerina says pleasantly with a smile. E, Nadyavam se da se nasladite na prestoya si, Katerina. Naruto finished with a smile. That's very good, Katerina said. 
Naruto looks at Elijah and says, Do you mind terribly, brother? I would like to have a moment alone with her. No not at all. Happy birthday, brother. Elijah said as Naruto leaves with Katarina. Two weeks later, Naruto was sitting on a chair in his bedroom of the mansion, sitting by the fireplace as he was relaxing after spending time with Aurora, Natalie, and Elijah's there too. He couldn't visit them much while he was spending time with the doppelganger. Elijah shows him a parchment. Look, a Roman parchment. Elijah said as he showed it to Naruto and he recognized this one. Hey, I remember etching this scroll. Although, I was pretty drunk from the 20 pints I had drank when I did it. Naruto mentioned. Your finest work remains your Aztec drawings. Elijah complimented. Really, not the African carvings, the Celtic high crosses, or the ancient Greek pottery. Cuz I was quite proud of all of those. Naruto said. The Aztec. Who can resist a shaman? Elijah sighed in nostalgia, as he remembered a few of his own encounters with shamans. Naruto laughs about that. They had managed to repair their relationship after the Aurora thing and creating the Strix, and they had been good for the last 200 years. Though there was something he needed to deal with. Brother, I think it's time we had a talk about you and Katarina. Naruto suddenly said. Brother, what is your meaning? Elijah asks. Listen brother, I have noticed how you stare longingly at her when you think no one is watching. She isn't Tadia, and I think you need to stop seeing her as such. I'm not saying that you have to stop being friends with her, but you need to realize how unhealthy it is for you to want to be with a woman that looks exactly like your lost love. You would be happier with someone who doesn't look like Tadia. Just think about it, Naruto said as Elijah pondered. Four months later, morning, Naruto is in an underground cellar with three of his witches and three vampires, performing a test on three technically unwilling humans. All right, so let's test this resurrection elixir out, shall we? Naruto said as he poured it equally into three cups. Naruto had his vampires step forward and hold the humans' mouths open as he poured the elixir down their throat. He then nodded to the vampires and one ripped out a human's heart, one snapped their neck, and another drained a human completely of blood. If they wake up, notify Rebecca or Aurora. I'm gonna be busy today. His witches and vampires nodded as he walked out while they watched the corpses. Afternoon, Naruto and Katarina are outside of his house and he is playfully chasing her. You have to chase me, she says. He chases her for a little bit but stops. You're meant to catch me. But if I catch you, the game will be over. And that's no fun, Naruto said. Thank you for spending the day with me. Katarina thanked her boyfriend in gratitude. You look lonely inside, so I took pity on you. Naruto joked, besides, I am courting you. What kind of man would I be if I didn't try to brighten up your day? She sat down on a stone bench. Elijah was supposed to play with me, but he seems to be avoiding me. Lately, whenever he looks at me, I feel as though he doesn't see me, but someone else. Yes, I must apologize for my brother. He is a complicated individual. He has suffered great trauma and heartbreak throughout his life. His first love looked exactly like you and he tragically lost her, the event being so traumatic that he won't talk about it, and I'm not sure he truly remembers what happened, though I partly feel like he blames himself. There was also that woman, Aya, who he turned so she could be with him. But when Michael came, and Elijah had to protect his family while I dealt with him, she betrayed him and joined ranks with his most hated enemy, and corrupted his dreams of creating a better world. With close to 500 years of heartbreak weighing him down, I feel as though he does not believe in love. Naruto concluded, as he told her about vampires, his family, the fact that he had a wife and two lovers. The only thing he hadn't gotten to yet was the sacrifice. Mostly because he was still testing his resurrection elixir. That is too sad for me to accept, my lord. Life is too cruel. If we cease to believe in love, why would we want to live? Katarina asks. Some people do not live at all. Naruto said as he stood up and held out his hand for her to take and she accepted before they walked back inside his mansion so they could have some fun. Next morning. 
Naruto woke up to the sound of knocking on his door, and speed over to open it after to putting pants on, leaving the freshly fucked Katarina in his bed. He opened his door and saw it was Elijah. What is it? I told you never to speak with me when I'm with her. Naruto said in annoyance. Brother, the others are getting anxious. You've had four full moons to go through with the sacrifice. They are getting concerned why you are hesitating. Elijah said as neither noticed Katarina had woken up and was listening in. Shut up, Elijah. I already know that I have to drink all of her blood when I sacrifice her in the ritual. You don't need to fucking remind me. Naruto growled as Katarina covered her mouth in horror and tears welled in her eyes as she felt the sting of betrayal and her heart broke. Brother, Elijah tried and Naruto had it. Naruto opened the door and shut it hard and punching and the sounds of things breaking could be heard on the other side of the door. Do not fucking tell me how to do my job. The resurrection elixir is not fully tested yet and I am getting around to telling her. But I will decide when that happens. I know what I am doing. Now get lost. While Naruto was doing this, Katarina was able to gather herself and steal the moonstone and a cloaking ring from his desk and stuff it in her dress she could sneak out with it later. That night, Elijah is sitting in a chair in the mansion. Naruto marches into the room angrily. What have you done? Naruto demanded. I don't understand. Elijah said as he put his book down that he was reading. Katarina has gone. She has fled. She stole the moonstone and cloaking ring that I had just finished a week ago. Naruto told him. This is all your fault. No. Elijah said as he stood up. I told her nothing. I swear. Naruto grabs him and vamp speeds him into the wall while his true face emerges, she overheard our argument earlier and now someone I care about along with my one chance to become a werewolf again, is out there in danger, because you felt the need to question me. I will find her. I will bring her back. You have my word. Elijah swears. I give you my word. That if she dies before I can become a hybrid, you will join Finn in a box. Naruto angrily. Later. Naruto sat by the fireplace, fingers clasped together as he glared at the fireplace as his wife, Zoe, Natalie, Rebecca, and Elijah stood behind. Well, Naruto asked with a dangerous tone in his ice-cold voice. K. Katarina escaped, Elijah said hesitantly. When Naruto said nothing, Elijah continued, I tracked her through the forests and I think we were getting close but then Trevor showed us where there was more blood and everything went downhill from there. He led us on a wild goose chase until he led my cohorts and I into a trap of wooden stakes. I came to a few hours later and backtracked to where Trevor and Rose Marie were staying. I found that both of them were gone, their human was dead, and judging from the noose and chair, there was no sign of Katarina's body, and the moonstone was nowhere in sight, Katarina. Used one of them to turn herself into a vampire. Naruto finished darkly. It was a testament to his self-control that he had not already exploded with anger and lashed out. Brother, I'm so, Elijah tried to say. Do you know how angry I am right now? You allowed a newborn vampire to outsmart you. And that's not the worst. Katarina turning herself into a vampire wouldn't be a problem if she had more family but she doesn't. I know this because I did a scrying spell to check and her family was killed. And it was by Michael who is somehow alive again with another white oak stake, and I am still not a werewolf again. So, you see, this, Naruto paused as he vamp sped over to Elijah and stabbed him with the dagger, putting him into a deep slumber, is a most deserving punishment for blowing my one chance to undo Esther's curse. Elijah flopped to the floor as he fully desiccated and Naruto breathed deeply as he stared at Elijah before he looked at Aurora and the others. The dagger stays in until I say otherwise. Naruto walked off and Rebecca made to go after him but Aurora stopped her. He needs to be alone for a little bit. Let off that steam. Naruto ran for some time in the rain until he stopped and let out a primal roar of anguish and rage before he channeled blue fire into his hands and slammed it down, creating a massive explosion. Next morning, when Naruto didn't come back the next day, Aurora and the others went out looking for him. It wasn't too hard to find him as they came upon miles of scorched earth and deep craters, and found him kneeling, mentally exhausted from releasing all of his anger. 
That night, Naruto woke up in his own bed and noted it must be nighttime out, given the lack of sunlight outside. He must have really exhausted himself. He then noticed in his dimly lit room and standing next to his bed hesitantly was Rebecca, dressed in only a short-sleeved nightgown, looking at him hesitantly. Rebecca, what are you? Naruto asked though he was cut before Rebecca slipping out of her nightgown to reveal her beautiful naked figure beneath it. Now he understood what she wanted as she moved onto his lap. Lemon, just relax brother, Rebecca whispered as leaned and placed a soft, tender kiss on his lips. She pulled back and stared lovingly into his eyes before their kiss became more heated and passionate, Rebecca slipping her tongue into his mouth during their French kiss, before Naruto felt soft kisses on his neck and trailed down to his stomach. When she reached his pants, she pulled them off slowly, freeing his 11 inches sword. Rebecca leaned in, licking over his head getting another groan from Naruto. She took a light gulp before wrapping her lips around his head taking his member into her mouth. Oh wow, Rebecca, Naruto moaned feeling the wet warmth of her mouth as she started to suck him off. She did her best to run her tongue around his cock but his impressive length and thickness made that difficult. Naruto ran a hand into Rebecca's blonde locks, simply enjoying the work she was doing. Rebecca started to suck faster as one of her hands continued to stroke the shaft she couldn't take in. Naruto's breathing started to become more ragged as he drew closer to his limit. Rebecca figured he was about to come from his reaction and that fact that his massive cock was pulsing like crazy in her mouth. Sure enough, after another few bobs of her head, he burst into her mouth. Rebecca did everything she could to gulp down wave after wave of his hot cum as it filled her stomach, managing to get it all down. Naruto used his vamp speed to roll them over and buried his face between Rebecca's legs. The smell of her sex was irresistible as he kissed her swollen petals at a feverous pace. Each moan and roll of Rebecca's hips drove her to want more and more of him. Naruto, after several kisses, decided he teased the female original long enough and drove his tongue deep inside of Rebecca's overflowing womanhood. He didn't want to miss an inch inside of her as he ran his tongue over her inner walls. He even grinded his nose into Rebecca, S hard clit to give his beloved sister even more excitement. Why yes, eat me Naruto, drink my cum, devour my naughty cunt. Rebecca shouted as she put a hand on Naruto's head and pushed him deeper into her as Naruto did everything he could to make Rebecca cum before his work paid off as Rebecca couldn't hold back and began to cum all over Naruto's face. Rebecca felt Naruto lap up her cum like it was a treat about to run out. She could feel herself spasm a little as her leg shook from coming so hard. When he was done lapping up her juices, he gently picked Rebecca up and put her on his lap. He looked at the dazed woman that was drowned in lust as she smiled at him knowing that he was about to push her over the edge. He then took her and impaled her on his 11 inches inch hard cock. S shit, was all Rebecca could say as she felt Naruto's hard raw dick fill her sensitive insides to their very brink. She felt him press against her womb as it twitched inside of her. Rebecca felt paralyzed by the sheer level of pleasure she was feeling. In her defense, Naruto was far bigger than any of her previous lovers and far more skilled. He then laid back with her on top of him and grips her hips and start to rock her on him as she couldn't help but let out a throaty moan. Just relax Becca, let me make you feel good. Naruto said as he looked over to Rebecca with a smile as he kept rocking Rebecca on his hard dick, before he started to pull out slowly. Once only the throbbing head was still in her, Naruto slammed his hips into Rebecca's, making his cock sheet right back into her. Rebecca couldn't help but give a scream of pleasure as she felt her womb being rattled under the force of her lover's actions. He slammed up into Rebecca's cunt over and over, making both her ass and breast giggle under the force of his actions as she can't help but moan every time his tool speared her, which was making her have many orgasms every time he thrust up into her as his tip pressed against her womb each time. And Naruto I I can't take any more. I'm coming. Place please come inside of me. I want to feel your cum in my womb. Rebecca managed to say after how many times she had cum from riding Naruto's dick and having her very core rattled with every thrust of his hips. Naruto gave them just what she wanted as he thrust upwards, piercing Rebecca's womb and sending her into an orgasm as he filled her womb with his hot seed. 
Oh oh god. There's so much. Rebecca moaned out as Naruto kissed her. She felt him run his hands on her ass again and she could only guess what he will do to her now that he had gotten her warmed up. Naruto took himself out of Rebecca, causing her to whine a bit before he flipped her over so her back was on the bed on he was between her legs. Beg for me to flood your tight cunt again. Naruto said as he started to stroke his cum-covered dick right on her sensitive pussy lips. And Naruto, please make love to me. I want you to fill me with your warm seat again. I want you to fuck me to the point that I pass out. Rebecca begged out as she bucked her hips against his cock to show how much she wanted it. Naruto couldn't help but grin at hearing Rebecca's statement, before he gripped her waist tightly and thrust into her. He felt how tight she was and how she held onto his throbbing dick with every inch that went inside of her. Naruto didn't stop until he bottomed out to her deepest regions which made her gasp to let him know she had reached her limit as well. He quickly began to fuck her like an animal, using his super speed to piston into Rebecca. She wanted him to fuck her till she couldn't stand straight and that is what he intended to do. Rebecca moaned loudly as Naruto began hitting her G-spot, before in a flash of vamp speed she sat up slightly and grabbed the back of Naruto's head, and brought him down to her causing him to immediately start kissing her neck, as he thrust even harder into her. Sweet Odin, I love you. I am coming. Come in me Naruto, Rebecca shouted, as she lost control of her vampire features that began to show, while she and Naruto held each other's hands. Naruto grunted as he also vamped out, before the two immortals bit each other sending each other over the edge. Retracting his fangs from Rebecca's neck, he pulled out of her and lay on his back next her as he pulled her tight against his body and kissed her passionately as Rebecca pulled the covers over them. Lemon End how long have you felt like this toward me? Naruto asked her as she spooned him. Since a little after you returned from Constantinople when you killed Michael. Rebecca admitted. But I was afraid of how you might react, and how Cole and Elijah would react. Well, I should probably tell you I've had feelings for you for a while myself. Right after I killed the Brotherhood, but I was concerned about how you might react and I figured you only saw me as a sibling so that's why I didn't make a move. Naruto admitted. A vampire is not bound by such trivial things as time. The same applies to relationships. Rebecca said. Well thank you. Naruto whispered as he kissed her and they fell asleep while he promised himself he would repair his relationship with Aurora, Zoe, and Natalie. Three days later, Naruto had traveled back to the area of forest where he had unleashed his wrath and anger after spending days making it up to Aurora, Zoe, and Natalie, and grimaced a bit. Damn, I really fucked this place up. It was them he sensed something peculiar. He walked a short rocky hill that led to a sealed cave. Naruto merely used his control over the earth to force the stones covering his path to sink into the ground. He walked in and saw that the cave was covered in beautiful white crystal formations. Wow, these are kinda nice, he said as he leaned closer to examine one. All of a sudden, he was assaulted by visions of an old man in a red robe with a staff and a powerful sword, of a dragon falling from the sky in a flash of lightning, and him being stabbed by a powerful sword. Naruto pulled back in shock. What the hell was that? He wondered as he backed up before his back hit something. He turned around to see that it was a giant crystal, as large as him. Though what interested him was what was inside the crystal. It was a extremely young and beautiful woman in her late twenties. She has dark brown wavy hair which sometimes appears to be black in a certain light. She has grey-green eyes and pale skin. What the hell? Naruto asked before he reached out with his senses and heard her heartbeat. She's still alive. He placed his hands on the crystal prison holding the woman and the crystal slowly cracked like glass as he drained the magic away, though Naruto was having trouble given how powerful and dense the magical energy in the crystal felt. After an hour of draining away the magic, the crystal broke and the woman fell out, with Naruto catching her. The woman gasped for breath and shuddered, whispering, Emrys. Emrys. She could only say it a good times before she passed out again her breathing letting him know she was alive. Naruto briefly wondered what she was talking about and why the name of Emrys seemed so familiar before he carried her out of the cave. One day later, the woman woke up in an unfamiliar bed. The sleeping beauty awakes, 
Naruto said from the room corner. Stay away from me, the woman said, but Naruto slowly approached. Relax. I am not going to hurt you, Naruto said but the hysterical woman was not listening. I said stay away. She shouted as her eyes flashed golden and she blasted him across the room, breaking his neck as he hit the wall. She marveled at his corpse for a bit before she made to get up and gather her stuff and run but then he got up and cracked his neck. What is the name of, how? I heard your neck break. The woman acts. Now that was just rude, considering I saved you from the crystal. Naruto said. You saved me from the cave. Why? How? She acts. The why is because I wanted to find out who you were and I sensed you were not a danger to me. The how is because I practice the old religion, Naruto said as his eyes flashed red and her responded by flashing golden, I see you do as well. Now, would you like to join me downstairs by the fire? It's a lot warmer. Naruto offered his hand and she hesitantly took it, before he walked them down the hall of his mansion to the two chairs in front of the fireplace, where warm soup was waiting for them. After they ate, Naruto leaned forward and asked, So, introductions. I'm Naruto Mikaelson and the one who freed you from the crystal. My name is Morgana, Morgana said, causing him to widen his eyes in shock. You're serious, Naruto stated in shock as he was literally sitting across from legend. Yes, I am very serious. Now, tell me, what has become of Albion in since my imprisonment? Morgana asks. Um, well, it's not called Albion anymore, it's called England. The world's a lot bigger now, with a lot more countries. Here, let me show you. Naruto said as he moved his chair closer and showed her a map of Europe, Africa, and Asia and showed her where England was. He let that sink in for a moment. What year is it? She asks. 1492 AD. Naruto said which made Morgana run a hand over her face. 1000 years. I've been stuck in that cave for 1000 years. Morgana said in shock before she turned to him. And what manner of creature are you? I know your neck snapped, yet you got back up like nothing happened. And I sense that you are both alive and dead at the same time, which I don't understand how it's possible. I am a vampire, Naruto said. Morgana looked at him in confusion. I have no idea what that means. Naruto thought and said, perhaps, if I showed you, it will make more sense. What are you doing? Morgana asked still wary. Relax. If you open your mind to me, I can show you my memories. Said Naruto. Morgana allowed Naruto to place his hand on her head before they closed their eyes. In the beginning, my family was human. Naruto said as he began showing Morgana his memories. Flashback. Come, Henrik. Our brothers are fighting again. Said Rebecca. Although our mother dabbled in the dark arts, we were actually just a family trying to survive in a time when it was quite difficult to do so. And, for better or worse, we were happy. Present day, that is, however, until one night, my youngest brother was killed by our village's greatest threat. Flashback. Mother. Klaus cried carrying Henrik's body back to Esther. Present day, men that could transform themselves into wolves during the full moon. Werewolves. Our family was devastated, none more than myself. Desperate to protect the rest of their children, Michael forced our mother to call upon her black magic in order to make us stronger. Flashback. Drink. Order Michael holding a bleeding wrist for Rebecca. Rebecca drank the blood as the transition into a vampire was complete. Present day. Thus, the first vampires were born. But with this speed, this strength, this immortality, came a terrible thirst for human blood. No one felt this hunger more than me. For a while, I drank animal blood. It kept me satiated for a time, but when the full moon came, I couldn't stop myself. Flashback. Klaus fed on a human killing them in the process. When I killed for the first time, they knew what I truly was. Naruto said. Niklas. Shouted Elijah. What is happening to me? Klaus asked fearfully. Elijah went to help his brother but was stopped by their father. Don't. Commanded Michael stopping his son. Father. It hurts. Said Klaus in pain as his bones continued breaking. He's a beast, an abomination. Michael said in disgust. Present days. 
I wasn't just a vampire, said Naruto. You were also a werewolf. Morgana realized. I was the result of an indiscretion my mother had hidden from us all. An affair, with a werewolf. Flashback. Infuriated by this betrayal, Michael forced Esther to cast a spell that would suppress my werewolf side, denying me any connection with my heritage. Naruto said. Klaus groaned as he awoke, and felt himself being bound to a cross, looking up his eye wide and seeing Michael bind him to a cross as Esther prepared a spell, with Elijah standing off to the back. Quickly Klaus got his free arm loose as Michael tried to shackle it and tried to undo his other arm but Michael grabbed it, Elijah. Elijah, hold him down. Michael yelled. Brother, please, don't let them do this to me. Klaus yelled fighting against Michael. Do it now, boy. Now, Michael demanded before Elijah walked forward and helped Michael. Help me, Klaus pleaded and watched in shock as Elijah looked away. Esther walked forward with a heated moonstone soaked in Tatia's blood, Anima Markham. Iskora Stivuka. She chanted as Michael and Elijah backed away. Mother, please don't, Klaus yelled struggling, but Esther said nothing and without an expression used the moonstone and branded Niklas who screamed in pain causing Elijah to flinch, while Naruto took that as his cue and forced the merge aka the takeover to happen. Klaus screamed in pain as his forehead sizzled from the heated moonstone digging into it, and his soul being manipulated before he collapsed as he passed out. Esther stepped back with the brand, is it done? Michael acts. Yes. Esther nodded about to turn away but paused as black energy began to come off of Niklas like smoke before his hair changed gaining a bright blonde color and spiking in a wild mane like fashion, his body grew more muscular, he grew whisker marks, and his skin turned a bit darker. What is happening? Elijah asks. I don't know. Take him to his quarters, I'll consult with Ayana. Esther said getting a nod from Elijah who quickly unbound Niklas. Present day. Suppressing my werewolf side actually allowed me, the true personality, to come out. And it gave me something else. Naruto said as he showed her. Flashback. Naruto showed her the fight with Michael and the result. With a groan Michael was about to get up but shouted in pain as his sword was drove through his back, piercing his heart. Who's the weakling now? Naruto as he snapped Michael's neck. Naruto stood up as he pulled the sword out, that felt good. He sighed before he walked to his knapsack while flicking the blood off Michael's, now his, sword. Niklas. Esther said as she tried to stop him but when she touched him, he grabbed her hand, breaking it and roared at her while vamped out. While he did this, a red glow appeared on his hands, and Esther felt her magic painfully drain away. He stopped after a moment and snarled before picking up his knapsack and speeding away, while everyone looked at Naruto in shock as in less than a minute, he had defeated their father. He then showed her all of his memories from his past life and everything else, that did not include his sex life. Present day. So, that's my story. Naruto said as Morgana absorbed the info of vampires being real. So, what about you? There's quite a bit to tell, Morgana admitted as this was the first man that was being nice to her because he actually wanted to. And after seeing the crap he had gone though, she felt a connection to him. Perhaps I can speed it up, Naruto said as he offered her his hand. She had seen that he could do this thing where he drank someone's blood and could view her entire life history in a moment. Don't worry. I won't look at everything. Just from the time you met Emrys up until you being stuck in the crystal. When she nodded her head, he let his true fact come out and bit into her hand though he was as gentle as possible with her. Morgana felt a stab of pain when he bit her but the sensation of him drinking her blood felt good for some reason. Naruto saw everything. He saw her the first time she actually met Merlin. He saw her try to have Uther murdered but changed her mind after he showed remorse for someone he killed. He saw how she could never sleep and how the court physician knew what was going on with her and never told her. He saw how she was terrified when her magic manifested and Merlin chose not to help her. How she met her half-sister Morgos and how she helped her sleep peacefully for the first time in years with a simple spell. How Merlin cruelly poisoned her with hemlock, forcing to slowly die as she gasped for air while her throat constricted. How she excelled under her sister's hand and went back to Camelot to get revenge on Merlin for killing her and Uther for persecuting her kind. 
how Merlin almost killed her again and she learned that Uther was her father, which gave her a claim on the throne. How she conquered Camelot, only to lose it within days, and lost her sister in the process. How she tired countless times to kill Uther before finally succeeding. How she conquered Camelot again, only to lose it again and nearly die escaping, and would have had it not been for the young dragon, Athusa. How she and the dragon were captured by a magic-hating warlord and buried in a living grave. How the mystery of Emrys and the final battle. How she foresaw her own death and used a glamour and compulsion spell on some poor fool that had been passing by to fool Emrys into thinking she had been killed and went with her true army to Camelot unopposed and destroyed everything, as Camelot had taken everything from her. Her mother, her father Golwa, her sister, her innocence, her heart, and even her sanity. She personally made killing Guinevere last for days. By the time Merlin returned to tell of Arthur's passing, he found Camelot burning to ash and everyone dead. She and Emery's battled with their magic but in the end, she was defeated, but seeing as Merlin had given away Escalibur back to the Lady of the Lake, he trapped her in the cave within an impenetrable crystal, where she would suffer endless torment over all of her evil deeds for the rest of time. And then he sealed her in with the intention of never letting her out. Naruto let go of her and licked the little bit of blood off her hand before placing a tender kiss on her hand and sealing the wound. He looked at her with solemn eyes and said, I am so sorry for what they did to you. Emrys, Uther, and the rest of those bastards. Especially not Emrys. What he did you was cruel, even for me. Naruto may be a vampire with a jaded past, but hemlock on an innocent woman who had no idea what was happening to her was needlessly cruel, especially since it took up to three hours to kill its victims. Naruto hated Emrys. He was an affront to everything Naruto stood for. In his first life, Naruto fought to the point of insanity to save Sasuke from himself, even when he seemed irredeemable. Naruto stayed with it until the bitter end. While in this life he was less selfless, he still protected and fought for those he cared for. He also didn't betray his friends nor was he a coward that bowed to something like fate. You don't have to apologize to me. You weren't there. Morgana said. She would not normally be like this. So open, honest, and trusting with a stranger. Not after what she suffered prior to becoming a high priestess. But after a 1000 years of torment, she had had a great deal of time to reflect on her mistakes. She realized that while Emrys had betrayed her, tried to kill her, and pretend like she was always going to be evil no matter what, she had allowed herself to be manipulated by her sister Morgos. While Morgana knew Morgos had cared for her, she had used Morgana as a pawn in her bid to destroy Uther. Morgana didn't have to do what she did. She still could have gotten revenge on Uther and Merlin, but she did not have to kill and harm countless innocents to get it, including her former friend and her own brother. Right now, she was like she was when she first discovered her magic, except more damaged and just needed someone to care about her and treat her as a person. You can stay with us if you want. Naruto offered, and she was brought out of her own inner reverie. What? Why would you offer me that? Morgana asks. You look like you need a friend. And I take care of my friends. Naruto said simply and Morgana slowly nodding, as she really had nowhere to go in this strange new world. Elsewhere, an old man with a long white beard stood before a calm lake in the Russian countryside. He had been taking a break from trekking around the countryside of England as Arthur had not yet come again, and he thought perhaps a little traveling would do. The old man stretched his free hand towards the lake, speaking in an ancient tongue that had not been heard in these lands for centuries, his eyes morphing from a pale blue to a dazzling gold. An arm leapt out from the once still waters, tossing a strange and ancient object from the lake, a sword with a golden hilt and a razor-sharp blade. The old man caught the sword as it flew through the air, hefting the weight of it in his hand. It had been many years since he wielded this blade. The old man scowled. I'm coming for you, Morgana. One year later, one year after Naruto had freed her from her prison, Morgana was actually enjoying herself. For the first time in 1000 years, she didn't have to plot or worry about Merlin. Rebecca and Aurora treated her like a sister. She discussed and debated magic with her fellow witches Zoe and Natalie, and how it there were many different styles of magic. 
Cole was fun to hang around with, once she got used to dealing with his wild nature. Naruto showed her the world and culture of the current era. She had to admit, Naruto had been a really good friend, and she had observed not only his relationship with Aurora, Zoe, Natalie, and Rebecca, but also how he and Aurora interacted with the two dozen children they had adopted over time, who most became vampires. Morgana had to admit, she was starting to fall for the mature middle Mikaelson. That also terrified because the guy she liked, Merlin, had poisoned her and nearly killed her. She knew Naruto wasn't like that but it did not help calm her. Suddenly though she sensed something. A presence she hadn't sensed in a long time. And she dropped the glass of wine she was carrying. Morgana, what is it? Naruto acts as he stepped next to her and placed his hand on her shoulder. It's Emrys. He's back in England. He's coming for me. Morgan breathed in fear she hugged herself. Morgana was normally like this at the prospect of facing another magic user, but Emrys was stronger than her. He had defeated her in every one of their bouts when they both fought seriously, and facing the man who had damned her to 1000 years of torment scared her. Hey, it's okay. I'm not gonna let him touch you. We are not going to let him touch you. Naruto said as Cole, Rebecca, and Aurora gathered around. He's coming for me. This is my fight. I can't ask you help me, and I won't, Morgana said. Too bad, darling, cause you got us. Cole said in a rare show of seriousness. You're like a sister to us, Morgana, Aurora said. Yeah, and if this old coot wants to kill you, he's gonna have to go through us, Rebecca said. I don't let the people that I care about die, Naruto said. Morgana looked down she nodded in acceptance. The Valley of Camlin. Merlin slowly walked into the valley where Arthur was stabbed by Mordred and where Mordred died. Morgana had sent him a raven, letting him know where to meet her. Been a long time, Emrys. Morgana said from her position high on the rocks. Hello, Morgana, Merlin greeted though his was filled with disdain. You must have a death wish. Escaping the cave, calling me here to the site of my greatest failure, facing down the master of the mystic arts. Not to mention, looking like you did when you conquered Camelot the second time. You like it, Morgana mockingly asked as she as she stood up, I thought I'd dress up for this little confrontation of ours. This time, I'm going to kill you for good and avenge Arthur. Emrys said as he cast a wordless spell to send her flying, but Morgana held out her hand and dispelled it. It's not going to be that easy this time. I've learned some new tricks, Morgana said as she breathed deep before continuing. Look at you, you're pathetic. All that power and yet you would rather be a serving boy to an unworthy king than be what you had the potential to become. Your power is wasted on you. I've always believed that magic should be used for good. Emrys said. Magic should be used however we choose to use it. Good and evil are merely points of view. One man's evil is another man's good. The right choice is not always the easy one, something you never truly understood. Morgana said. Enough. I am not here to debate with you. You will die here, Emrys shouted. By the time we are done with you, I will send you off to join your beloved Arthur, Morgana said as he eyes glowed golden and stayed that way. Emrys was confused. We, he acts. That was when he saw it. Four giant Chinese stone dragons all converged on his, mouths open and ready to devour him, as Naruto, Cole, Aurora and Rebecca surfed on each of the heads jumping off seconds before they impacted him, kicking up a cloud of dust. Did we get him? Cole acts. All you did was anger him. We have to get Excalibur away from him but don't let him stab you in the heart with it or you'll die. Morgana shouted as the dragons exploded outwards to reveal Emrys was fine, who roared and transmuted them into a swarm of bats that he sent at Cole, who blasted them with a gout of green flames. A pillar of stone rising from the earth, caused by Aurora hit him, in the face as he stumbled and he recovered to raise Excalibur to block a sword strike from Morgana. Challenging me to a sword fight, Morgana. I was trained by Arthur and had 1000 years to better myself. Emrys said as he forced her off of him, while he blasted a lightning bolt toward her, only for her to redirect it through her body and back at him, hitting him in the chest. He got up and blocked several strikes from her, 
before he shouted as she cut him on his right hip. Time not spent well, apparently. Besides, I was always better than Arthur. Morgana said mockingly as she raised her hands and blasted him with a powerful non-verbal telekinetic blast which sent him flying. Naruto slapped his hands on the ground and a large transparent barrier rose around the area they were in. Cole Vamp sped and punched Emrys into the air. Rebecca summoned a geyser of water that hit him towards Aurora. Aurora leapt up and axe kicked him into the ground. The three of them tried to rush him, but he raised his hand and the three of them stopped in their tracks. Insects, he muttered in anger as they kept getting in his way of killing Morgana. He raised Excalibur to strike at them but he was sent flying by another telekinetic blast by Morgana. Naruto sent a stream of blue flames at Emrys, who conjured a shield bubble of light. Rebecca and Cole, followed suit with their own flames, while Aurora and Morgana blasted him with lightning. Enough. Emrys shouted as he sent out an omnidirectional blast of lightning that hit them all and stunned. He then looked to the sky and spoke an odd forceful language that only Morgana recognized. No, it can't be, she muttered. Sure enough, Kilgara appeared in the distance. He has a bloody dragon. Cole shouted. I didn't say anything because I figured he died from his wounds 1000 years ago. Morgana shouted back. Stay focused. He'll destroy us if he gets the dragon's help. I'll deal with the dragon. Can the rest of you deal with him for a minute? Naruto acts. What are you planning, Naruto? Rebecca acts as the storm clouds gathered. I'm gonna bring the thunder, Naruto said as he lowered the barrier as lightning cracked across the sky. As the dragon grew closer while the Emrys fought off the three original vampires and one high priestess, Naruto concentrated until his eyes snapped open. Yes, he said as he raised his hand toward the sky and it was surrounded by a thin layer of lightning and a dragon made entirely of lightning appeared out of the storm clouds. Now dragon, vanish in the roar of the thunder. Naruto said as he slammed his hand into the ground and directed the lighting dragon to strike the real dragon that was merely 300 yards from him. Since lightning flashed in one one thousandth of a second, there was no way for Kilgara to evade it and he took the full brunt of the lightning as it slammed him into the ground, and Emery stopped to fighting to survey the damage done to Kilgara. Naruto absent-mindedly noticed the dragon was a blackened and charred mess but still alive. He leapt up into the air and gathers a high concentration of lightning in his hand, lightning blade. Naruto shouted as he stabbed into the dragon's head, piercing through its tough scales and brain, killing it instantly as it roared in pain and died. No, Emrys said as he snapped Cole's, Rebecca's, and Aurora's neck with a snap of his finger, and telekinetically pulled Morgana toward him. He pulled her into the path of his sword, intending for it to pierce her heart as she flew towards him. Before it could pierce her, she was shoved aside and the blade pierced someone else and a squelching noise could be heard. Morgan looked as she got up and she was shocked by the sight. Naruto had pushed her out of the way, while he had pulled Excalibur into his gut, while his right lightning-covered hand was inside Emrys's stomach, and his left was gripping Emrys's arm that was holding Excalibur so he couldn't pull it out. Naruto was also absorbing Emrys's magic. What, is this? Emrys shouted as he struggled and felt the painful drain of his magic on top of the lightning-covered hand in his stomach. What's wrong? Never met a siphoner before. Naruto coughed as he dug hard enough into Emrys's arm to draw blood. It was then that they felt some odd feeling pass over them. Impossible. Inconceivable. My own descendants siding against me for Morgana. Emrys acts. I don't give two fucks if I am your descendant. I won't let you harm her. You're not gonna hurt Morgana ever again. Naruto shouted as the blade in his gut was slowly killing him. She is a monster, one who takes pleasure in the torture of innocence. Emrys shouted back as his magic was draining and his body went numb from the lightning in his stomach. I have watched her take men of honor and twist them to her will. She has slaughtered kings and destroyed kingdoms. I will do what I should have done 1000 years ago and kill her. You turned her into that monster you speak of. She was just a frightened young woman when her magic manifested. But instead of helping her, you let her deal with it on her own like a coward and when she was the key to the sleeping spell that would ensure a bloodless end to Uther's reign of terror, you poisoned her with hemlock, betraying her and leaving her vulnerable to Morgoza's manipulations. 
I may be a blood-sucking vampire, but I don't kill the people I care about. You are a traitor to your own kind, killing them whenever they tried to get vengeance for their families, and protected Uther, the same man who slaughtered them by the thousands. The only monster here is you. Naruto shouted as he used the last ounces of his strength and ripped Emrys's sword arm off and Morgana blasted him away with a bolt of lightning. Naruto groaned as he dropped to one knee. Morgana rushed to his aid. Morgana, I can feel myself getting weaker. It's slowly killing me. You need to pull it out. I can't do it myself, it's weakened me too much. Morgana pulled out the sword and Naruto groaned as he picked himself up. He leans against a rock and grimaces as his wound slowly heals. Emrys yells in pain as his stump continues to bleed. The war see chat ahuil jin, Morgana said as her eyes glowed golden as she stretched out her hand at Emrys and the rest of his limbs were severed from his body and his screamed in pain as the once great sorcerer was reduced to a writhing mass of flesh of blood. Morgana towered over him with Escalibur poised to end his life. You might kill me today Morgana, but Arthur will live again, and let Albion into a golden age. That day will never come, Emrys, because Arthur is never coming back. Morgana said solemnly. He is the once and future king, my lady. He is destined to come back. Emrys said. Morgana held Escalibur in her hand and touched the tip as Naruto walked over and the other three originals woke up. You never did understand what these dragon-forged blades could truly do. There is a reason why these weapons are so dangerous. It destroys the very soul of anything it kills. Which means no resurrection or reincarnation. Why do you think I had one forged for Mordred? I wanted to make sure back then that Arthur never came back. Morgana said. No, no, the prophecy, Emrys struggled to say. Prophecy and fate are for the weak. We make our destinies, not some invisible hand controlling everything from on high. Naruto said as he stood next to Morgana. You heard a prophecy and thought it was gospel truth. You are pathetic Emrys. He never deserved that power. Using it to protect the one massacring his own people instead of striking him down. He could have lead magic users to a golden age on his own, but he chose to the believe the words of that senile old manipulative dragon. He may be a thousand years old, but he never really grew out of being Arthur's servant. Morgana said as the other originals joined them. Goodbye, Merlin. She muttered the name of her former friend for what would the final time, as she stabbed downward piercing his chest and ending the life of the legendary sorcerer forever. 1702. Cadiz, Spain. The city of Madrid burned as Naruto confronted Michael while his siblings prepared to escape. Don't you ever get tired of this, Michael? I mean, dying once was bad enough and now you want to do it all over again. Naruto acts. You are an abomination and don't deserve happiness. Michael growled. God, you are pathetic. Naruto said before Michael charged at him. But Naruto already anticipating this, spun around in a roundhouse that sent Michael rolling backwards, as soon as Michael rolled to his feet Naruto was there and jumped on his knees and using the height kicked Michael in the face sending him to the ground clutching his nose, as Naruto flipped in the air, and came down as Michael tried to get up, only for Naruto to grab his face and slam his head into the ground causing a crater to form under him. Naruto began to apply pressure on Michael's face causing his to groan before he placed his feet at Naruto's stomach and kicked him back into a wall. With a grunt Naruto made to rush Michael but ducked as Michael rushed in and threw a punch, blocking Michael's jab, Naruto kneed him in his torso, causing him to double over before he picked him up and slammed him into a table causing it to shatter. Michael grunted before Naruto grabbed his leg and tossed him into the roof and jumped up to kick him the face but Michael grabbed his foot and slammed him into the roof and tried to stomp on Naruto's neck, only for Naruto to dodge and sit Uo and throw a punch to Michael's knee causing it to snap inward before he planted a hand under him and kick up off the ground and kick Michael in his cheek sending him flying down into the courtyard. Michael groaned as he stood up and spat blood, before he saw Naruto rushing him again, and pulled out the last of the two white oak stake he made 700 years ago. Naruto tripped him up and grabbed the stake and made to stab him in the heart with it, but right before he stabbed Michael, the stake vanished and was teleported elsewhere. What the hell? Naruto said. Ha, thought you were the only one who had witch allies, bastard. Michael laughed. 
I don't need the steak. Naruto said as he punched Michael and sped him two miles outside the city limits before a tree root stabbed Michael in the heart, causing him to desiccate. Tree roots burst out of the ground and wrapped around him before more and more wrapped around him until a large oak tree had grow itself around Michael. That should hold him for a few months. Naruto said as he sped off to meet with Elijah and the others to move back to the new world. Chapter 5 2010. Alaric Saltzman Apartment in Mystic Falls. Katerina Petrova, doppelganger vampire for the last 500 years didn't know what to do, as she watched Naruto close the door behind Alaric. Naruto was wearing a gray unbuttoned Henley underneath a black Andrew Mark Lennox faux shearling pilot jacket, he wore black jeans, black belt and his black fire harness 8R boots. Around his neck was his witch's talisman, one. He sat across from her. Let's talk shall we? Naruto smiled at Catherine. About what? Catherine asked bitterly, looking at the original, you're just going to kill me anyway. Who told you that? Naruto asked curiously, we haven't talked to each other in 500 years. When have I ever threatened you? Catherine frowned, the day you killed my family. Naruto sighed, which again, who says that I'm the one who killed your family? Naruto asked. You dare deny it, Catherine demanded glaring. I take pride in a lot of my accomplishments. The slaughter of your family was not one of them. You were a vampire, unable to continue your family line. So after I calmed down from my initial rage at you turning yourself, I was content to just watch your family till a new doppelganger appeared but they were already dead when I checked on them. I needed your family alive so another Petrova doppelganger could be born for me to break my curse. Catherine thought about it, and realized it made sense, t then what was all that talk about my death is going to be painful. I like to be dramatic. Naruto shrugged before he grabbed the leg of the chair Catherine was sitting on and pulled it closer so that they were in each other's personal space, I actually was, despite my initial anger, impressed with your will to survive. I realized I was to blame for you running away, as I kept secret the fact that I always intended for you to return to life after the ritual and hopefully make you immortal all along. After my wife calmed me down, I called off the search for you a day later. S so, I've been running for 500 years, from you and your family. For nothing, Catherine said tears in her eyes as Naruto nodded. Yes, Naruto replied as Catherine covered her mouth while tears left her eyes. W who killed my family? Catherine asks. His name is Michael, an annoying thorn in my side these last 1000 years. Naruto said watching as Catherine frowned, I want you to join my organization. We govern the supernatural world and there is a member who would be very excited to meet you. Who? Your daughter, Nadia Petrova. Naruto said causing Catherine's eyes to widen, 25 years after you had turned. She tracked me down and asked about your whereabouts and I turned her after she told me she already had two children and put them up for adoption. That was also the time I undaggered Elijah. S so, you've known about Elena. Since before she was born. Naruto nodded smirking before he looked at the time, I would send you on your way, but I need you to remain here until the ritual is done. Afterwards, I will set you free. In the meantime, anything you need tell Maddox he'd take care of it. Naruto got up and began to leave the apartment. Wait, Catherine said standing up and walked to Naruto who watched her. She handed him the vial of vervain Damon Salvatore had given her. I want you to know that you can trust me. Naruto looked at the vervain, and back to Catherine before he cupped her cheek. Thank you, he said before he walked off as Catherine sighed in relief and frowned in determination. She would do whatever Naruto needed of her whenever he needed if she had the chance of meeting her daughter and the chance to be with him again. Mystic Grill Matt Donovan was leaving a voicemail for his vampire girlfriend Caroline Forbes. Hey, Caroline, it's me. I thought you were coming back to meet me. Look, I need to talk to you. It's important. He hung up and saw Damon Salvatore walking toward the bar. Alaric entered and walked over to Damon who just ordered a drink and said to the bartender, I'll have the same. Damon looking down said, I screwed up. Yeah, yeah, you did, Alaric said with a nod. Gentlemen, why so glum? A voice asked causing Alaric and Damon to look toward the voice to see that it was Naruto. Ah, uh, 
Naruto, I presume. Damon groaned. In the flesh. Naruto said before he looked to Alaric, thanks for the loner, mate. Damon stood up. Any reason you stopped by to say hi? I'm told you and your brother fancy my doppelganger. Just thought I'd remind you to not do anything you'll regret. Naruto said. Ha. Thanks for the advice. I don't suppose I could talk you into a postponement, by any chance, huh? Damon replied. You are kidding. Naruto asked before he looked to Alaric. This halfwit is kidding, right? No, not really. Alaric said. I mean, come on, what's one month in the whole grand scheme of things? Damon acts. Let me be clear. I have my vampire. I have my werewolf. I have everything I need. The ritual will happen tonight. So if you and the rest of this little town want to live to see the next sunrise, don't screw it up. Naruto said before he walked off. Damon sighed and sat down. That was fun. You're going to screw it up, aren't you? Alaric acts. You think if I took his werewolf out of the equation, she might get over the fact that I tried to turn her into a vampire? Damon asked looking at Alaric. I think it won't matter, because you'll be dead. Alaric said. But without the werewolf, he can't perform the ritual tonight, which means I would have bought her one month before the next full moon. And you'll still be dead. Alaric retorted. Are you gonna help me or what? Damon asks. What do you want me to do? Alaric acts, unaware that Naruto was listening and narrowed his eyes. Alaric's apartment. Catherine was making coffee. When Naruto arrived, everything okay? She acts. Yes, I need you to do me a favor. Naruto acts as he took the coffee mug from her. What? Catherine acts. Make a call for me. The Salvatore brat ignored a warning I gave him and he's going to suffer for it. Naruto ordered as he took a sip. Who do you want me to call? Catherine asked taking the phone. Alina's aunt. Naruto smirked watching as Catherine immediately made the call. Later, Stefan parked his car, and got out and opened the door for Elena, as she got out of the car, she said, thanks for today. Stefan nodded before he suddenly sensed something and stood in front of Elena protectively as he stared at Naruto, you got me all nervous. I thought maybe you'd done something stupid. You ready, my dear? I'm ready, Elena said before she made to go toward him but Stefan grabbed her arm keeping her behind him. No. Stefan said, filled with emotion. I wouldn't. No reason for you to die, too. Naruto said, before Elena moved in front of Stefan as he kept looking at Naruto. No, Stefan, hey, hey, it's fine, it's fine. I'll go. No one needs to get hurt. There's no reason for you to get hurt. Elena said before she kissed him, I love you. Stefan looked down at Elena and said, I love you, before they kissed again. Close your eyes, Elena said before he did as he was told and she let go of his hand, before he opened his eyes to see that Naruto and Elena were gone. Minutes later, Naruto walked back into the apartment to see Catherine sitting at the table bored, as he sat at his laptop, before he hooked his phone to it, and opened it to see a blonde woman trying to turn into a werewolf. What are you doing? Where's Elena? Catherine asks. She's with Greta, Naruto said still looking at the woman whose face could be seen and it was shown to be Jules. It's almost time. Suddenly the door burst opened, causing Catherine to look at the door, while Naruto sat back in his chair. I wasn't aware you'd been invited in, but I'd assume it was you that gave Katarina this, he said, holding up the vervain. Damon frowned glancing to Catherine who had stood up before he looked at Naruto, I've come here to tell you that you have to postpone the ritual. Pretty sure we already had this conversation. Naruto acts, still not turning toward Damon. Yeah, but that was before I rescued your werewolf and vampire. Damon retorted. You would think so, wouldn't you? Naruto calmly asked as he stood up while turning to face Damon. And you can kill me for it. I don't care. It was all me, Damon said confidently. Naruto smirked. I've heard about you. The crazy, impulsive, overly emotional vampire who is always trying to steal his brother's girl and make him miserable. I knew one of you would try to stop me. It was a just a 50-50 guess on who, though between us, my money was on you. He walked to the laptop, 
Naruto turned it up and Jules screaming could be heard. The nice thing about werewolves is they tend to travel in packs. Need a closer look. Naruto closed the laptop and took his phone before he tossed it to Damon who looked at the video, Jules. Naruto walked back over to Damon. When you spend a thousand years trying to break a curse, you learn a thing or two. Naruto said his voice taking on a darker edge to it. First rule, always have at least five backups. Five backup werewolves. Five backup witches. Five backup vampires. Damon said looking back up to Naruto. I've got them covered, too. Naruto said before he looked to Catherine, put him in his place, love. Damon's eyes widened before Catherine blurred forward and punched him in the jaw sending him flying over the counter into the kitchen. Groaning the younger vampire reset his jaw as he began to climb up to his knees, as Catherine walked into the kitchen and snatched a knife they was stabbed into the corner up, Catherine. Dot you have to fight the compulsion. He said as Catherine remained silent and he blurred forward and tried to hook but Catherine did the splits and stabbed him in the foot causing him to yell in pain before she came up stabbing him repeatedly as she did, before Damon slapped the knife from her hands and pushed her away. Stumbling back, Damon tossed the knife at Naruto who caught the blade between his two fingers, as Damon tackled Catherine to the ground but she put one of her heels to his torso and kicked him over her. Rebounding in midair, Damon turned to Catherine who blurred up to her feet and sped forward and punched him in the face Damon tried to give a jab, but Catherine moved her head out the way, and elbowed Damon in the temple, before she grabbed the back of Damon's jacket and kneed him in the ribs twice before she kicked his feet from under him. Damon on his back was punched in the face four times, before he tried to perform a leg lock to choke Catherine out, but she stood up with him and Vamp sped forward and slammed him into a wall putting a large hole into it. As his submission maneuver was broken he was lifted out of the hole and slammed into a table, before Catherine got on top of him and began to savagely rain down blow after blow into his face. Naruto smirked watching Catherine, before he moved forward. All right Katarina, he's had enough. He said as Catherine got off Damon whose face was covered in blood. Damon wheezed and coughed as Naruto knelt beside him, and moved Damon's sleeve up to see a werewolf bite. Hum, you weren't one of my backups anyway. Werewolf venom is a horrible way for a vampire to go, mate. Patting Damon's face, Naruto stood up, let's go. Naruto said walking off with Catherine following him, as they left Damon on the floor bleeding and alone. Steven's quarry, Elena and Greta were walking in the dark, where are we going? This way, Greta said, you're Luca's sister, aren't you? I heard about you. He and your father were looking for you. Elena said. Well, they were wasting their time. I wasn't lost. Greta replied before Elena tripped on a rock. God, I can't see anything. Elena complained. With a swipe of her hand Greta lit up the rocks on the side of the walkway, before Elena saw someone on the ground, Jenna. She asked before she rushed to her aunt, Jenna, Jenna. Jenna. Hey, hey, Jenna. Jenna. Kneeling beside her she tried to find a pulse but couldn't. Eyes now tearful she said, oh, my god. No, Jenna, no. Turning to Greta she said, he killed her. Why, I did everything that he acts. Suddenly Jenna woke up with a gasp causing Elena to fall back in shock. Greta smirking said, she's not dead. She's in transition. Moments later, Elena and Jenna were now sitting on the ground, as Jenna was clutching her head, oh, my head. What's wrong with me? Jenna asks. Do you remember what happened? Elena asks. I was waiting on Rick, to come back to the house, then you called me. You were so scared. Oh, ah, I should have realized that it wasn't you. The second I walked out of the house, someone grabbed me. A vampire. Naruto. It was Naruto. Elena said. He made me drink his blood. And I don't. I don't remember anything after that. Where are we? What happened? Jenna asked looking around. We're at the quarry. He brought us here. Elena said. Jenna placed her hands on the side of her head as she looked down to the ground before she looked up to Elena. Why don't I remember anything? She asks. Jenna, do you remember? When I told you how someone becomes a vampire? Elena asks. Yeah, if you die with vampire blood in your system, it's 
Jenna paused as realization spread across her face. Oh, God. He killed me. She whispered hoarsely. Jenna, listen to me. Listen to me. Everything's going to be okay. I'm going to get you out of here. Elena said. I'm a vampire. Jenna asks. And I bet you're hungry. Greta said as she approached them, as they looked up at her from their position on the ground, before Elena saw a sharp rock nearby and rushed to grab it, but, with a wave of her hand, Greta sent Elena flying backwards. Elena landed painfully in the dirt, and when she got back up and rushed toward Jenna, Greta waved her hand again, creating a circle of fire around Elena, causing the girl to stop. Don't bother trying to get through. I spelled the circle. You're trapped. No matter what you do. Greta, please, just just let her go. Elena pleaded. Ignoring Elena's plea, Greta sliced her wrist open with the sharp rock. As blood dripped from her wound, Jenna looked at it, hungrily, Naruto chose her. Greta said. No, Elena said. Greta lowered her wrist toward Jenna. Drink it, she ordered. Jenna, don't, Elena yelled. I can't, Jenna said. Let her go. Hey. Elena yelled at Greta only to be ignored as Jenna continued to stare at Greta's bloody wrist and finally sunk her teeth in. No, no, Elena yelled as her eyes glistened with tears, as Jenna closed her eyes as the warm blood entered her mouth. After a few moments, Greta pulled her wrist out of Jenna's grip causing Jenna to fall to the ground. That's enough, Greta said as she stood up and stepped backwards. Jenna, it's going to be okay. Elena said as Greta flicked her wrist and another circle of fire surrounded Jenna, who retreated from the flames, looking terrified, look at me. Hey, look at me. Jenna turned her head toward Elena, blood still running down her chin, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Jenna silently replied, no, as dark veins of hunger crept toward her eyes. Elena was pacing back and forth in her circle of fire, while Jenna was sitting in hers, how are you feeling? Elena asks. I feel like myself. Only not. Everything is brighter. The fire's hotter. Part of me is terrified, but there's another part of me that doesn't want to feel anything. Jenna explained. Vampires can turn off the part that's human. That's the part that hurts. Elena said as Jenna's eyes welled up with tears. I'm gonna die, aren't I? Jenna asked sniffling. No. Jenna, I'm not going to let that happen. I don't care what I have to do. Elena said. In the distance, the sounds of twigs snapping and Jules groaning were heard by Elena and Jenna, who's that? Jenna acts as Elena had a look of realization. That must be the werewolf. Greta pushed Jules down to the ground, as she clutched at her stomach, groaning in pain. What's happening to me? Jules acts. Greta smirked as she walked away. I cast a spell to slow down your transformation. Your insides are trying to tear themselves free. She said before she flicked her wrist, and a third ring of fire encircled jewels. Greta, witches are supposed to maintain the balance in nature. It's your duty to them to keep this curse sealed. Elena said. I swore my allegiance to Naruto. The king of the supernatural world. Catherine and Naruto walked up causing Jenna to gasp as she looked between Catherine, and Elena, glad to know I still have a dance partner. Naruto said before he looked at Elena, Jenna and Jules. Hello, my lovelies. Are we ready? Jules, Elena, and Jenna were still contained in the rings of fire. Jules continued to moan in pain. While up on a nearby hill, Naruto retrieved the moonstone from his pocket. I've got the moonstone. I spent 500 years looking for this. I hate to part with it. Naruto said before he handed the moonstone to Greta who took it and looked up at the sky. The moon has passed its apex. Remember everything you need to do. Naruto asked Greta. I remember. Greta said. Then let's begin. Naruto said. With a nod Greta dropped the moonstone into a stone bowl filled with flames. Sparks flew as the moonstone was destroyed. Greta began chanting a spell in Latin. Naruto approached the rings of fire. Jules still lying on the ground, moaned in pain, as she looked up at Elena, everything I did. I was just trying to help Tyler. Jules said. Are you Jules? Elena asks. I didn't want him to be alone. Jules said as Naruto looked down at her. Shall we? Naruto asks. 
The ring of fire around Jules dispersed, while Jules's eyes turned yellow and she used her werewolf speed to rush at Naruto. Alas, Naruto easily got the upper hand and pinned Jules to the ground, before plunging his hand into her chest and ripping out her heart. Jules took her final breath, tears streaming down her face, and died. Naruto breathed heavily as he held the bloody heart in his hand. Elena looked on, horrified, while Jenna looked nervous. Greta continued chanting a spell while Naruto held Jules's heart over the ceremonial bowl, squeezing the blood into the flames. I can feel the curse weakening already, he said. It is working, Greta confirmed, causing Naruto's smirk to widen. Over in the rings of fire, Elena watched Naruto and Greta in the distance, as Jenna looked up at her, eyes glistening with tears, the day that the lawyers called to tell me that I was going to become your guardian, you know what my first thought was. She asked as Elena looked down at her and shook her head, isn't there someone else who can do this? Jenna, there was no one else who could have gotten me and Jeremy through all of that. Elena said. It's just the thought that I almost passed up taking care of you. Jenna sobbed. But you didn't. You put your entire life on hold to help us. Elena said. Look around, Elena. I failed you. Jenna said. Yes, you did. Catherine said getting their attention as Elena glared at her. You really should have ran for the hills when I offered it to you. Shut up. Catherine. Elena yelled but before the conversation could continue Naruto walked up. Hello, Jenna. Naruto said as Jenna and Elena got up looking at him. Let her go. I understand that I have to die, but she doesn't. Elena said but saw that Naruto was paying her no attention so she walked closer to the flames, causing them to flare up, and immediately she retreated. Careful, now. Naruto said looking at her. Elena, don't. Jenna said. No, Jenna, we can't leave Jeremy without a family. Elena replied before she looked to Naruto, I don't understand. I followed your rules, I did everything that you ax. I didn't run, please. But Damon Salvatore didn't. Naruto said causing Elena to blink in confusion, he is the only reason Jenna is here now. Naruto was about to say more but sighed, I don't recall you being on the guest list. He said looking up at the top of the quarry, along with Jenna and Elena who gasped as Stefan stood atop of the cliff. I'm here to talk, Stefan said causing Naruto to sigh as he ran a hand through his hair. Fine, Naruto looked to Jenna, briefly, then to Catherine. They try anything, kill Jenna, then go to the old witch house. There you'll find Jeremy and Bonnie. Bring the boy here. Jenna's, Alina's, and Stefan's eyes widened hearing Naruto's order as the blonde vamp sped up to the top of the cliff and walked calmly toward Stefan, what can I do for you, Mr. Salvatore? Elena and Jenna looked up at the two vampires as they talked, patiently waiting to figure out what's happening, what's going on. Jenna acts. I I don't know, Elena said before she looked at Jenna, you can hear them. You can hear anything, Zhu just focus on them. Jenna did as requested and focused and slowly began to make out the conversation, you don't need to kill Jenna. I'll take her place. Oh, I don't know. I rather appreciate the symmetry of three women, Naruto said as he began to walk around Stefan, three angels. Sacrificed at Satan's altar. Don't play games with me. You'll get what you want either way. You're quite the hero, aren't you? I've heard that about you. Naruto smirked. Just make the trade. Me for Jenna, Stefan said as Naruto sighed and looked thoughtful for a moment, before he smirked. Nah, Naruto stated before get blurred forward and stabbed the stake into Stefan's chest, grazing his heart causing Jenna, and Elena to flinch and gasp. Naruto needs Stefan in the face, sending him falling off the cliff and when he made contact with the ground, his neck snapped, no. Stefan, no, Elena yelled tearfully. Landing beside Stefan's dead body, Naruto looked to Greta, let's finish this, shall we? Greta began chanting the next part of the spell which dispels the ring of fire surrounding Jenna, who looked on, frightened. Elena, teary-eyed, watched, no, she said. Your turn. Naruto smirked. No, Jenna, no. Elena yelled as she attempted to get to Jenna, but the fire around her flared up. Jenna looked over at her, it's alright, Elena. I know what I have to do. 
she said as Naruto raised an eyebrow, watching the moment of shared silence between Jenna and Elena, before Jenna began to vamp speed to Greta but Naruto caught her by her throat. I think not. Good try though. Naruto laughed as Jenna fought in his grip. Jenna. No. Elena cried as Jenna looked up at Elena, tears in her eyes. Naruto tossed Jenna over toward Greta, and Vamp sped forward and caught her, slamming Jenna into the ground he placed the stake to her chest, know that this isn't personal, but lessons need to be learned here. Now turn it off. Naruto compelled Jenna whose fearful expression slowly dissipated into an emotionless mask, good girl, he said before he stabbed the stake into Jenna's chest. No, Jenna, no, Jenna. Elena wailed as Jenna's body started to become gray and decayed, as Naruto released the stake from his grip and stood up, while Jenna laid lifeless on the stone with the stake through her heart. Moments later, Greta began chanting the next part of the spell, as Naruto was by her side, when Stefan woke up and felt the splinters besides his heart keeping him paralyzed. Stefan looked up at Elena and saw her tear-streaked cheeks, and then looked over towards Greta and saw Jenna's dead body with the stake in her chest. No, Stefan said as Greta poured Jenna's blood into the ceremonial bowl, I'm so sorry. Elena placed her finger to her lips and shushed Stefan, are they going to kill him? Yes, Stefan said, you know, I can hear you. Naruto said standing beside Stefan as he and Elena looked at him, I've been in town for weeks, and I've compelled a lot of people to be my eyes, and ears. I know Bonnie is still alive, I know Elijah is helping you. I must say, I'm disappointed Stefan. Naruto grabbed Stefan by his hair and lifted him up by it, causing Stefan to grit his teeth in pain. A vampire with your reputation, playing sacrificial lamb for some human. Quote, I love her, something you know nothing about. Stefan glared. I doubt that's how you really feel. Does she know about the real you, Ripa? Naruto asked smirking as Stefan vamped out while grunting, that answers that. No worries, if you survive, you'll meet a new doppelganger in five centuries. Releasing Stefan, Naruto kicked him in the gut, sending the young vampire flying through a tree, before he approached Elena, it's time. The fire dispersed and he extended his hand but Elena ignored him, walking up to the hill while Stefan who was impaled on a branch, weakly looked up and watched. Elena looked down at Jenna's body, before Naruto circled his arms around her from behind and pulled her into him as he bit her and began to drink her blood. Elena's eyelids fluttered and her eyes rolled into the back of her head before she died, and Naruto released her causing her corpse to fall to the ground. Blood dripped from Naruto's mouth and the flame in the bowl extinguished. Elena's body lied lifeless and Stefan stared at her, sadly. His eyes widened when Catherine sped forward and grabbed the body before she sped off. Naruto breathed heavily and walked down the stone steps, I can feel it. It's happening. He said to himself as he looked up to the full moon. Suddenly, his bones began to crack and he started to transform. His eyes were now yellow like a werewolf's, but he still had the veins under them, like a vampire. His irises then returned to their searing red color as the veins extended from underneath his eyes down to his jawline, his sclera turned black, and he grew a second set of fangs. Ha 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 Naruto laughed even as his bones were breaking, before he gave a loud roar to the moon before he was flung into a tree, as the fire reignited and Bonnie showed up using her magic to mystically hurt the vulnerable Naruto. Greta was about to retaliate to help him but Damon snapped her neck, and immediately he began to look for Alina's body but was shocked and worried that he couldn't find it. Seeing Stefan, he sped for him and got him off the branch. Where is she? Damon axed over Naruto's screams of pain. Catherine, took her. Stefan said causing Damon's eyes to widen before the two looked to see Naruto lying against a rock, as Elijah approached him while Bonnie stopped chanting. Elijah. Naruto greeted. Hello Niklas. Elijah said. One thousand years after tossing aside that stupid name, and you still say it. You're the only one who still does, you know. Naruto replied. Elijah looked at Naruto, who blurred up, but Elijah grabbed him by his neck and slammed him back down into the stone, reducing it to rubble and before Elijah could move to thrust his hand into Naruto's chest, he was frozen by a powerful telekinetic force. 
Elijah struggled but could not move an inch. You didn't really think I would leave myself vulnerable, did you? Naruto acts. Suddenly Elijah yelled in pain, as Naruto stabbed him with a dagger. For trying to kill me. Naruto said as Elijah decayed as he fell to the ground. Naruto cracked his neck as he smirked at the trio. Hello Bonnie. Naruto smirked as the girl raised a hand. Oh, I bet Sheila is not very happy with you being smack dabbed in the middle of vampire drama. Bonnie's eyes widened. What? I guess you don't get very far into your family history before the Salvators and Doppelganger facilitated in her death. I have a history with your family spanning 900 years, love. Come find me when you want to be a real witch, and not a magical fix-it slave for these ungrateful people. Later. Naruto turned to leave, when Damon and Stefan shot forward and stopped in front of him, where did you take Elena? Why worry about a corpse? Naruto acts. She deserves to be buried with her family. Stefan said. I'm not done with her yet. Once Catherine has done what I told her to do, she'll dump the thing at your house. Naruto said. Thing. Damon growled before he sped forward and punched at Naruto who leaned his upper body out of the way. As Damon came for another swing, Naruto slapped it away with his forearm, and kicked Damon's chest, crushing his sternum, killing him temporarily. This sent Damon flying to the pond with a large splash. Stefan sped forward but Naruto simply heat up a hand and a lightning blade ran him through, causing Stefan to shout in pain as he was pinned to a tree groaning as his body went numb, as he looked at the blade in shock. A vampire that denies his own nature, can never stand up to an original. Naruto said before he enhanced the lightning causing Stefan to convulsed before he released as Stefan collapsed face first into the ground. Bonnie was about to start her spell, but Naruto appeared behind her. It's over Bonnie, go home. He said before Bonnie turned to face him but saw that he was gone along with Elijah's body. Unknown apartment. Naruto walked into the apartment above Alarix to find Catherine sitting on the couch, as doctors worked on Alina's corpse, taking her eggs, for another woman of Naruto's choice. I thought, you'd be running around as a wolf. Catherine said. I'll do that later. Naruto smirked. So Greta, and Maddox are dead, I take it that means we'll be traveling alone. Catherine acts. Maybe, we will be leaving in two days, if my other little idea works out. Naruto smirked. But you already broke the curse. Catherine said confused. Yes, but I also came for Stefan. Potential like that should be molded and I kinda miss my old pal. Naruto smirked as he sat besides Catherine while a doctor walked up. We've finished the operation. The man said before Catherine got up and dragged and bloody finger across the incision line, to cover up what was down as the corpse healed. Good. Now go dump Alina's body at the Salvatore house. And forget about tonight. Catherine said to the doctor as Naruto walked over to the woman and compelled her to go get laid with whoever she chose and to notify him when she is pregnant. The woman and the doctors left to fulfill their orders, as Naruto closed the door and turned into a kiss from Catherine who pulled away to see Naruto looking at her in surprise. Let's pick up where we left off 500 years ago. Catherine said speeding Naruto to a wall and kissing him before sucking on his neck, as he smiled and groped her ass cheeks possessively. Chapter 6. Few days later. It's been two days since the sacrifice and no one has seen Naruto or Catherine. A funeral was held for Jenna and John, the latter of whom had passed away after having Bonnie cast a spell to give his life force to Elena so she could remain human. No one knew why Catherine took her body and why it was dumped on the doorstep of the boarding house. Everyone was now anxiously waiting for Naruto to make a move on those who interfered. While at the same time hoping that he and Catherine had left town, not knowing that the two had just been rekindling their romance by fucking the living daylights out of each other in Alaric's apartment along with training as Naruto taught Catherine the more advanced powers of the ancient vampire. Damon entered his house with a resigned expression. He was completely powerless to stop Naruto and he seriously feared and hated him. Not only did Catherine, who he thought he could take one-on-one, -on -one, completely own him in a fight and beat him to a temporary death barehanded but when he attacked Naruto after the ritual he didn't get a single hit and no matter how much he tried before a kick to his chest broke his ribcage and stopped his heart while he sank to the bottom of the quarry.
Now Jenna was dead because he didn't listen when Naruto told him not to interfere, and because he interfered, he was dying from a werewolf bite. Elena would never forgive him for it, talking about that she needed time before she could forgive him, and he didn't have any time. Damon couldn't help the sarcastic hollow laugh he gave before he went into a coughing fit, and hacked up blood into his hand. Sighing, Damon cleaned the blood from his hand and wiped his mouth, before he opened the curtains letting the sun shine into the foyer. Knowing what awaited him the longer he let it drag on, Damon decided to take his daylight ring off and Damon dropped it to the ground. The second he wasn't in contact with the ring he began to sizzle as burns began to appear on his skin while smoke appeared and as he was seconds away from bursting into flames, Stefan tackled him to the ground, out of the sunlight. Get off of me, Damon said tired as his burns healed before Stefan sped him into a wall. You're not doing this, Stefan stated, just did. Damon before he was sped and slammed into another wall, you know what happened to Rose, Stefan. I don't care, Stefan said before he sped down to the cellar and tossed Damon inside, you're not dying today. Stefan closed the door and locked it, as he looked at Damon through the bars in the door, who remained on the floor but turned to look at him, what's the plan, Superman? I'm gonna find a way out of this, Stefan promised. Oh, right, a miracle cure. Good luck with that one, Damon said. I got Bonnie looking for something, anything, Stefan replied. Always the hero, Stefan. Just tell me goodbye, get it over with, Damon said before he began coughing and rolled onto his stomach, hacking up more blood and wheezing. Lie still, conserve your strength, Stefan said before he left. Which house? Bonnie was heading for the witch house, but suddenly stopped as standing in front of her was Naruto who was wearing jogging clothes, there she is. Morning love. What are you doing here? I was out running as a wolf, and came to see you. To try and kill me again. Bonnie axed aiming her hand ready to attack. I've never tried to kill you, Bonnie. Are you kidding me? She demanded. No, I'm completely serious. Think back to that night. I separated the doppelganger from the Salvators to speak to the both of you. Soon as you realized I had taken control of Alaric, you attacked me, over, and over. Yet you kept coming, because I wanted to see how strong you were. Naruto shrugged walking up to Bonnie who kept her hand up, you have a lot of raw power even without the 100 dead witches, something your family never lacked, but you have no finesse and little skill, so you waste the majority of the energy you use. Bonnie used a spell to give Naruto a aneurysm. The blonde placed a hand to his head, rubbing two fingers on his forehead before he took a deep breath and looked at Bonnie, unbothered by the spell, who continued to use the spell before she finally stopped. You just proved my point. Sheila could kill vampires half my age with that simple spell at your age. She was a true Bennett witch. Do not talk about my grams. Bonnie yelled pushing Naruto sensitive subject him. I get it. After all, you were ready to commit suicide for the ones who killed her. Naruto said catching Bonnie's wrist when she tried to slap him. She overused her magic. No one killed her. Sheila knew the dangers of using her magic at her age after so long of not using it. So what spell was so hard for her that she couldn't take it? The tomb barrier that she was forced to take down because Damon Salvatore and Anna Zhu were gonna slaughter innocent people if she didn't and failed to put back up because Stefan Salvatore ran in after the doppelganger and got trapped. Who convinced your grandmother to even open the tomb, anyway? Elena and the Salvatore brothers. Funny how Elena was connected to the events that caused you to lose Sheila and Abby. What? Bonnie asked stopping in her plan to fling Naruto away. Your ancestors Zoe and Natalie Bennett were and still are important to me. After their sister broke my laws for the supernatural world, they promised me the eternal servitude of their bloodline and so, the Bennett witches served me faithfully for 900 years in my organization. Sheila and Abby were the only ones I ever let retire from the organization, which in hindsight, was not one of my better ideas. I know where every single Bennett witch is at this moment. Even your mother. Bonnie watched Naruto for a moment, why are you here? Stefan, who was approaching, saw the two and quickly hid. I'm leaving town tonight, and I wanted to give you this. Naruto said handing Bonnie a card with an address and a pentagram on it, 
There are a number of communities that I run where witches who still practice away from the influence of vampires live. Show up to one of them, give your name, and this card, tell them I sent you. You will be welcomed. Bonnie took the card. See ya around Bonnie Bennett. Naruto said as his form busted into a horde of bats that flew off. Does he know? Stefan asked causing Bonnie to look over to him as he walked up to her. Of course not. He thinks Elena is dead. All we have to do is hope he doesn't find out differently, before he leaves town tonight. Stefan nodded. Are you ready? Bonnie nodded before the two entered the house. Later. Alaric's apartment building. Stefan was in Alaric's apartment, and he saw no one was there, frowning he used his super hearing and heard Catherine's voice. Why are you having me do this? Catherine acts. It's a ritual I do. I killed an innocent person because of that fool. She didn't deserve what happened to her. So if you could do it all over, would you choose someone else? The Gilbert boy, maybe. Naruto said before he hummed. What is it? Stefan is here. Let's let him join the party, Naruto said. Stefan's eyes widened before in a blur Catherine sped into the apartment and tackled him into a wall, before she bitch slapped him and grabbed his arm before breaking it as she turned into him and flipped him over onto the edge of the counter before grabbing him by his hair and speeding away. Naruto sat in a chair watching as Stefan was tossed through the door before Catherine returned behind him and aimed her finger at his back before a concentrated flame appeared at her fingertip and she began to finish branding a name into the back of his shoulder. Stefan fixed his arm and leg before he looked up at the two older immortals, Hello Stefan, what brings you here? I need your help. For my brother. Stefan said getting to his feet. Really? Naruto asked getting a nod. The witches said you had a cure. Make me a deal. Just give me the cure, and I'll do whatever you want. Stefan said. And what need would I have for a vampire who drinks animal blood, can barely fight, and can only use basic vampire abilities? Naruto acts as Stefan frowned, Katarina, would you go fetch the cooler, please? Catherine nodded and walked off, if we do this deal, I want you as the best version of yourself. Naruto told Stefan who looked confused, as Naruto picked up a beer bottle that was filled with blood and leaned forward smiling at Stefan, I heard about this one vampire, crazy bloke, always on and off the wagon for decades. When he was off, he was magnificent. 1917, he went into Monterey and wiped out an entire migrant village of 150 people. A true ripper. Sound familiar? I haven't been that way in a very long time. Stefan said as Catherine walked up with the cooler and set it down between them. Well, that's the vampire I can make a deal with. That is the kind of talent that I can use when I leave this town. Naruto said opening the cooler showing that it was filled with blood bags. Pulling out a knife, Naruto got a vial and squeezed the blade tightly allowing his blood to pour into the vial, as Stefan is looking at the cooler and Catherine who watched him before Naruto sat back down with the blood. There it is. You want to save your brother? How about a decade-long bender? Naruto acts. I'm not like that anymore. Stefan said, well, that's too bad. You would have made a hell of a wingman, but you don't want to do it, that is your choice. Naruto replied handing Catherine the vial, hold on to that. Naruto stood up, and walked over to the guest room where Elijah's dead body was on the bed, we are done here Katarina. Call Swanson and have him come collect Elijah. Catherine nodded and walked to the phone. Wait, Stefan said causing the two to look at him before he grabbed a blood bag and began to drink it till it was gone. Now that's more like it. Naruto said walking over to Stefan, the deal you pitched was that you'd do anything I said and in exchange I will save your brother from the werewolf venom, correct? Yes. Stefan nodded. And since I am saving your brother, who is also immortal, you will do as I say for all of eternity, correct? Naruto asked his true face emerged. Yes. Stefan said not knowing that his true face had emerged. And should you violate the terms of this agreement, at any given time, I will kill your brother, correct? Quote dot dot dot. Yes. Stefan said as Naruto gave a wide smirk showing off his fangs. Then I accept your deal. Naruto announced but Stefan wasn't really happy about it. Now please, finish your meal. 
Stefan grabbed another blood bag as a tear left his eye and he began to drink one after the other as Naruto looked to Catherine. Keep an eye on him. Naruto said getting a nod before he left the apartment. Salvatore boarding house. Damon was in bed as Elena took care of him. The two were talking about his past choices when they heard Naruto, Damon. Where are you? He said in a sing-song fashion. Naruto. Elena gasped in fear before she quickly hid under the bed as Damon tried to sit up when Naruto entered the room. My, you look like shit. Well I am dying. Damon said causing Naruto to nod. True. Why are you here? Damon acts. In exchange for saving you, Stefan has agreed to be my wingman for rest of eternity. Naruto said causing Damon and the hidden Elena to gasp, shocking isn't it? How you are nothing but a pathetic failure as an elder brother, and yet he has given up everything for you. I am going to make Stefan into everything he was meant to be. Damon glared at Naruto who sat in a chair with an empty glass, between me and you Damon, I don't like you. I can easily sit here and watch you die before going back to Stefan and telling him that I was too late in saving you, but I like to keep my word. Old habit from when I was a kid. So I want to let you know something, I was content to just do the sacrifice and leave but you pissed me off, so I got petty. Petty. You killed Jenna. Damon glared. Like you murdered Lexi and Bree. Naruto nodded as Damon and Elena looked surprised by those names. You knew Lexi, and Bree. Damon acts. I turned Lexi all those years ago. She was one of my best friends and she was supposed to come meet me in New York for a Bon Jovi concert after Stefan's birthday. So, when she doesn't show, I went to Bree's bar outside of Atlanta to see what was up and I see you had just ripped her heart out. Did you know that Bree was a Bennett witch? No. And why would you? I've only been killing every vampire that tried to get their hands on a Bennett witch for the past 900 years. I was going to kill you then and there, but then I saw your passenger. Elena Gilbert herself. You knew about Elena since, Damon trailed. I've known about Elena since before she was born. Naruto interrupted much to the shock of those in the room, now, the reason I killed Elena was because I needed her to die. Because you pissed me off and ignored my warning, Jenna died, and Elena knew before she died that the only reason Jenna was there, was because you disobeyed me. You basically killed her aunt, and she's never gonna forgive you for that. And now, I have your brother, and should he break his deal with me, it won't be instant, but I will tear the famous Salvatore bond asunder. Naruto bit into his palm, and poured the blood into the glass, before he placed it on the table, as he stood up, see you around Damon. There is the cure. I have to get your brother back into shape. He should be done with those blood bags now. Naruto turned to mist and flew out a window, and Elena scrambled out from beneath the bed, and handed Damon the glass, sniffling as Damon drunk the blood and sat up unsure of how to process the situation, as Elena got on her phone walking away. Next day, Stefan leaned his head back onto the headrest of the car as Naruto drove and pulled off-road into the forest, where are we? Stefan axed getting out of the car and following Naruto and Catherine to a small clearing. As I said, I need you in top shape. I need you to truly learn to fight as a vampire. Sit down. Stefan sighed and sat on the ground, have you ever meditated? No, Stefan said shaking his head. Surprising. Anyway, we feel more intensely, or we don't feel at all. Meditation can be an alternative to flipping the humanity switch. Meditation is also how you get in touch with the magic in your body. Vampires have magic. Vampires only exist because of magic. Most witches believe that nature has turned its back on all immortals because we are abominations. Vampirism is just an elaborate protection spell. With the spell we can fight to protect ourselves against werewolves with our speed, and strength. Against humans we are capable of compulsion to force them to leave us alone and continue living in secret. It's been abused by every single vampire in existence but that's what it's for and we can also shapeshift and cast illusions once we are old enough. Catherine said. And witches. Stefan asked and Naruto conjured five balls. One of white flames, one of lightning, one of stone, one of wind, and one of water as the sunny sky suddenly darkened with storm clouds. The five elements of nature and the weather are at our beck and call. Naruto said. 
Why haven't I ever heard of this? Stefan acts. Well do you have any enemies? Naruto acts. No. Why? Stefan acts. There you go. You and your brother were so consumed with your feud, that you know little of your own people. Naruto said before he motioned for Stefan to begin meditating, once you do this I will teach you how to fight properly as a vampire. Four hours every day will be committed to this. Three months later, a woman walked outside the house from the kitchen door, Rudy. Rudy, come on, it's too hot to make me come looking for you. The woman called before she whistled as she bent down and picked up a dog toy, before she turned and gasped seeing Naruto. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Naruto smiled in apology. Can I help you? Yeah, my car broke down a couple of miles back. I feel like I've been walking forever yours is the first house I come to so I was just hoping I could use your phone. Naruto acts in an American accent. Don't you have a cell phone? The woman asked as Naruto pulled out his phone. Huh, yeah the battery died. Look, I promise I'm not a serial killer I just wanna use your phone. Naruto said. Sure. The woman said turning around and heading for the house. Sue, I can come in. Naruto acts. No, I'll get the phone and I'll bring it out to you, the woman said. Well I tried. Naruto sighed before he shot forward and grabbed the woman by her throat, as his pupils widened and shrunk, how about you invite me into your lovely home. In the kitchen another woman was frying food and walked over to the counter with the frying pan, I bet you a hundred dollars that dog ran off to a house with air conditioning. Woman 2 said before she turned around and saw Woman 1 and Naruto entering the kitchen as Naruto held the nape of the sobbing girl's neck with one hand. What's going on? Woman 2 acts. Please don't be alarmed. I was told Ray Sutton lives here. Naruto said. He's almost never here. He's on the road mostly. Woman 2 replied. But I expect he makes it home, once a month, during a certain phase of the moon. Naruto smirked watching as the woman gasped as he sensed fear spike in her, that's what I thought. Where is he now? Quote dot 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 quote. If I have to make you tell me it's going to be infinitely more painful for you. Hum. Naruto warned. Woman 2 ran out of the kitchen and opened the front door, and screamed as Stefan stood in the doorway. I love it when they run. Naruto said as he and woman 1 walked after her. He's in Toll. It's near the border. A bar called Southern Comfort. It's on Highway 41. Thank you. Naruto said before he looked to Woman 1. Now, may my friend come in. Woman 1 sobbed. Yes. The other woman looked terrified as Stefan walked in before Naruto pushed the first woman to him. Kill this one quickly. And make that one suffer. I'll be in the car. Naruto said before with a grin he left closing the door behind him. Please don't. Woman 1 pleaded sobbing. Stefan just looked at her and his true face emerged before he bit her, causing the women to scream. Outside the house, Naruto walked to his car, smiling, how long do you think he can keep this up? Catherine asked in the driving seat. No telling. He still thinks you're compelled to do my bidding, and even though he acts like he hates it, he is loving the new powers he has. Yeah, and why do I have to keep acting like that? Because it may come in handy down the road, for them to think we are still enemies. Naruto smiled leaning over and kissing Catherine, you're going to escape pretty soon. And do what? Catherine asks. Help Damon find a way to kill me, of course. Which is impossible. Catherine said. Not the point. I need you to find Michael. Abby Bennett won't tell me his location after I helped her desiccate him and my locator spells can't get an exact location, just that he is entombed in Charlotte. According to Lucy, Bonnie told the witches that she brought Jeremy back to life, and he may be a medium. Word is he had a thing with Anna Zhu. She knows where he is. Anna is dead, Catherine said. She's on the other side. A purgatory for supernatural creatures when they die. Chances are she's following him around hoping that he'd hear her. Naruto said. Catherine nodded before the two looked over to Stefan who was covered in blood walking to the car and getting inside. Have a good time. Naruto acts. Can we go? Stefan acts. Sure you don't want to burn the house down. Cover your tracks. Naruto acts. No one is tracking us. Stefan said. Right. Naruto smirked as Catherine drove off.
Later, Mystic Falls. Damon was in his tub taking a bath. Reaching over Damon grabbed a bottle of champagne and a glass and poured himself his glass, only to discover that it was empty, we're out of champagne. Huh. No, you are out of champagne. I don't drink in the morning. Andy said who was putting on her makeup. Well would you be a deer and walk? I think you can probably get it yourself. I'm not your slave. Andy interrupted causing Damon to sigh before he stood up and began to leave, I mean you're dripping a little. Damon nodded and continued to leave. Downstairs Elena walked in the front door, and took off her jacket as Damon walked up behind her, good morning, he said. Hey, I was gonna. Elena began but gasped as she turned around and saw a smirking Damon completely naked and quickly she turned around again, you heard me. You knew that I was here. Yeah, you should learn to knock. What if I was, indecent? Damon asked only for Elena to put one hand over her eyes and with the other hand she grabbed a towel and threw it to him as she turned around but still with one hand over her eyes. Damon put the towel on around his waist and Elena peeked between her fingers to make sure he's covered up, and upon seeing that he was she dropped her hand from her eyes. Sheriff Forbes gave us another location to check. Elena said as she pulled out a note out of her pocket, Memphis. Another dead end you mean? Damon said. You don't know that, Elena replied. Damon sighed and walked up to her, you're right, Elena. This could be the one. After three months this could be the one clue that tells that Stefan is alive and well and living in Graceland, he said sarcastically. Elena snatched the note, fine, I'll go by myself, she said before she began to walk away but Damon sped in front of her and took the note. Right, and let Naruto know you're tracking him. He thinks you're dead. Let's keep it that way. Damon said. It's a new lead Damon, we haven't had one in a while. Okay, I'll check it out. If I find anything I'll call you. Damon said walking away as Elena sighed and left. Damon walked into his room and opened Biss closet door where there's a map and a lot of notes before he pinned the new note up on the map, they moved on to Tennessee. Huh, that fluttered victim you had me looking into had family in Tennessee. Andy said walking up. Which one? Pensacola. Damon asked getting a nod, up for a road trip. Andy smiled. Ha, huh, no can do, I've got to work. But I can see if I can get you an address. She said before they kissed, see you at the party. Get me that address. Damon said. Southern Comfort Bar. The bar was bustling with activity as Ray walked up to the bar. What's up Ray? The bartender asks. Hey Red. Get me a beer. Ray said leaning onto the bar as he was handed a beer before Naruto walked up with a corona. Ray. Ray sudden. Naruto acts. Who wants to know? Ray acts. I've been looking everywhere for you. We started in Florida, Pensacola. I met a young chap there who you used to work with before you moved to Memphis, now he directed me to two lovely young women. And they led me here, to you. Naruto said sitting down. I think I'll be going. Ray replied before he made to stand and leave but Catherine appeared and placed put a hand on his shoulder keeping him down. Not so fast handsome. You only just got here. Catherine said. Yeah, and your type are very hard to come by, which is why I have some question. Vampires. Ray said looking between Naruto and Catherine. Swifty Swift Ray. Yes. My friends here are vampires. I however, I'm something else, a different kind of monster. I've got some vampire, I've got some wolf. You what? Ray asked weirded out. A hybrid Ray, I'm both. You see, I want figure out how to create more of me. Now you being the first werewolf that I've come across in many a moon, pun intended Ray. I need you to direct me to your pack. So, where can I find them Ray? You want to do this here in front of everyone. Ray acts, gesturing to the people. Oh, that. Naruto said before he snapped his fingers and as if a blanket was being pulled from reality itself, the bar bustling with activity turned into a blood bath with corpses, severed heads, and blood everywhere with the exception of the bartender who was cleaning up, as if he didn't care that everyone in the bar had been slaughtered, and Ray saw Stefan on the floor feeding from a woman before he sat up gasping and began to bet to he feet licking the blood from his lips. Meet Stefan. Ray watched as Stefan walked up to him, before darkness took him. 
Later, Naruto and Catherine sat at a table watching as Ray thrashed as he was chained to a wall in front of a dartboard with a dart in his forehead, two in his neck and one over his collarbone. Stefan was stirring another dart in a glass of liquor filled with wolfsbane before he walked around the table and launched another dart into Ray's forehead chasing the werewolf to yell and try to get loose. Ray, you can end this right now. Just tell me where your pack gathers for the full moon. Stefan said walking up to Ray and snatching the dart out. I can't. Ray stated. I know, I know. You live by code and all that, but see I don't get to stop until you tell me. And I do whatever he says. That's the way it goes around here. Stefan said. A woman walked over to Catherine, and Naruto, hello Miss Catherine. I have some more information for you. You told me to tell you if I saw anything. I saw that guy's brother Damon at the farmhouse. Well, thank you Claudine. You just tell your friends to keep up the good work on the neighborhood watch, eh? Catherine said before Claudia walked off and Stefan appeared at the table. My brother's still on our trail. Stefan acts. He's getting closer. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Naruto said standing up. No, no, no. Let me handle it. Stefan said, relax, I'm not going to kill him. That would terminate our deal. After all I wouldn't want you to suffer from temptation. I want their location by the time I return. Naruto said before he walked away as Stefan cursed. Catherine walked to a window, and saw Naruto get into the car and leave, before she smiled and looked back to Stefan, before turning to him, okay, now is our chance. Catherine said, chance for what? What do you think genius, escape? Catherine said. I can't. There may not be another chance like this Stefan. Catherine said. If I leave my deal is over. Naruto will go to Mystic Falls kill Damon, and find out that Elena is alive. Elena is alive. Catherine asked surprised getting a nod from Stefan. I need to keep him from Mystic Falls. He's on his way to Mystic Falls. Which is why I need to make a real quick call. Stefan said. I tried. Good luck Stefan. Catherine said before she walked out the bar and began to press the unlock put in some keys she for from a victim, and smiled when she heard the car beep and quickly got inside and drove away. WPKW9 Studio. Andy's talking on the phone as she walked through the studio, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, I, I am the last person here again. She said as the lights in the room go out, days of work. Please can we do this in the A.M. I have a party I have to get to, and you gotta get a life. Okay, alright, bye, bye. Andy grabbed her back and saw a light on in a office and cut them off, who cut off the lights. Andy turned around and turned the lights on looking to see Naruto on a laptop. Oh, I am so sorry. I thought everyone had went home for the day. Andy smiled as Naruto stood up and she looked him over with an appraising eye. It's all right. You're Andy Star, right? Guilty as charged. Andy laughed as Naruto smiled and held out a hand. I'm Nick. Naruto said. Nice to meet you. So it's a Friday summer night. Why are you here if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I was doing research for a story. Never thought I'd run into the beautiful Andy Star herself. Naruto said as Andy blushed. Well how about I help you with your research, and we go grab a drink. Andy acts. Oh, you don't have a boyfriend. Naruto acts. No, just some guy with major issues who can't take a hint. Andy lied. Well I'll be happy to help send a message. Naruto smirked. Later Salvatore boarding house. Damon was walking up to Stefan's room, where Elena was getting ready for her party. It was then that his phone buzzed, and he saw he had a video message from Andy. Accepting it his, eyes widened when the first thing heard was moaning as of Andy's ass being fucked by someone was holding the the camera turned to show it was Naruto, she's lovely. I see why you like her so much. He said with an evil smirk, before he ignited her phone in white flames, causing it to melt into a puddle when he threw it behind him. Damon dropped Alina's present and his phone and sped off to his car just as a text from Stefan was seen, but the phone broke when it hit the ground. 30 minutes later, WPKW9 Studio. Naruto whistling while fully dressed as he cleaned his nails with a knife. When he heard Damon sped in, he threw the knife through Damon's stomach, 
punching a hole through his stomach as it embedded into the floor, while the explosion of pain caused Damon to fall. Took you long enough. Naruto greeted. Where is she? Damon growled from his position on the ground. Enjoying her gift. Naruto smirked evilly. I'm going to kill you. Damon growled as he vamped out as Naruto smiled as he saw Damon's anger over his actions, which is exactly what he was going for. Since making Elena hate him for causing Jenna's death was not enough, Naruto figured he should hit a little closer to home. What do you care? She's just your bloodbagged sex toy because you can't have Elena. Naruto asked before he thought for a moment. Hum, hold that thought. Andy was just about to take a leap of faith. Naruto said, causing Damon to look confused before the sound of something hitting the ground was heard. Wide-eyed, Damon slowly turned to his side and saw Andy on the ground dead, shame. Naruto said as Damon glared at him murderously, beautiful woman who died before her time. All because you got involved with her. Damon with a feral growl but Naruto stepped on his back, and ripped both Damon's right arm and leg off, causing Damon to scream in pain. Naruto gripped both sides of Damon's neck. I hear you're trailing me and Stefan again, I'll kill Alaric next. Naruto said before he snapped Damon's neck. To add insult to injury, he tossed the arm and leg towards opposite ends of the studio. He walked off whistling a happy tune. While he was walking away, one of his witches sent him a text to let him know that the woman he put Alina's eggs in was doing great with her pregnancy. Naruto made a mental note to steal more of Alina's eggs later on. Later, Naruto walk her into the bar to see Rei unconscious on the table and Stefan drinking, and what did we get? Naruto acts. Smoky Mountains. Stefan said. Perfect. Naruto smiled before he looked around, where's Katarina? She ran. Stefan said causing Naruto to nod, you don't seem surprised. It was test. One she failed, after we are done with this, we will be hunting her down. Naruto said walking up to Rei, you can breath easy knowing your brother continues to draw breath, however Ms. Andy Star has joined the angels, if you get my drift. Go get the car. Stefan nodded and left the bar, and made a call to Elena, as Naruto looked at Rei and smirked, you will be my first test subject, he said before he bit his wrist. 